welcome back to the life of T and N. Thank you so much for coming back and watching another one of my videos. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mary and I make videos all about nursing. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button either right down here or it'll pop up right here in the corner and join my journey. But before we get started with today's video, I just want to say I make videos all about nursing, but this channel has other life event videos. We have recently bought a new house, so as you can see, I have a new background. Um, I guess this is a sneak peek before we do a furnished home tour. Um, but we're almost done. We have a few more items to buy, and then I think our house is about 75% done. I feel like you're never 100% done with the house, if that makes sense, because there's so much to do and you can always remodel and redecorate and things like that. So you may be here on my channel just for this video. You may be a subscriber coming back for another nursing video, so thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone's support. Or maybe this is the first time you're coming across my channel. Either way, welcome. I'm excited to get into this video and take you guys along with me. So let's get right into this video. Right up here, I'm gonna link my past video, and it is titled Hospice Admission, A Day in the Life. So I took you along a day in the life of a hospice nurse doing an admission. So you can go ahead and check that out now or after, it doesn't really matter, but that's gonna kinda give you a picture of you going along with me as I complete an admission from before all the way to the end. Well today, so I wanted to bring you guys along to show you how I prepare and set up for a hospice admission. So this is before we actually go out and see the patient. We have to get prepared. I have to get prepared. So I'm gonna start off with a disclaimer. Every hospice agency is different. Every hospice agency in different states are different. The role of a hospice nurse within an agency is different. So let me tell you that what I'm gonna show you today may not apply, but maybe you can take some useful tools that I use and apply it to what you do. So I'm gonna start off by saying that I am a per diem hospice nurse. If you know from my channel, if you don't, I am a full-time public health nurse, now public health nurse supervisor. So that is what I live and breathe every single day. I have more videos coming on that, just a side note. But going back to my per diem, so I only schedule myself when I wanna work, which is very nice for my schedule. Moving into this new house, trying to get on a routine and a schedule, and having a supervisor position is already a lot in itself. So with that being said, I give my hospice agency my availability for admissions. And based on that availability, if they have a referral come in, and I gave them, for instance, a Saturday, then they will let me know, hey, this Saturday I have an admission, can you accept it? So then I say yes, no, things like that. So this is where we're at. I provided my availability. I've gotten a call from our intake coordinator and stated we have a new hospice admission in this location, are you still available? My answer was yes. So that is the first part. So let me put that out there because I feel like some hospice nurses, they work either salary or they work full time or part time and they have a caseload and on top of their already busy caseload, they're doing admissions. Or you may just be an admission nurse where all you do is admissions all day long. You clock in say at eight o'clock and you do four admissions and you clock out by five. That's a lot, I know. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Um, for me, whenever I give my availability, I most of the time only do one admission. And for me, I'm paid per visit so I can go into depth about my scheduling and pay and stuff like that. If you wanna see that, put that down in the comments because I can elaborate and I don't wanna get into it this much here. But just so you have some background, this is where I'm coming from. So here's where we're at. I'm scheduled for an admission. I am going to go to the patient's house in about two hours. So right before I go, I like to be prepared. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so you may ask, what do I do first? Well, one, I accepted the admission. So then they put me on the patient's caseload as the nurse. Every electronic system or whatever database you use is gonna be different. For mine, they added me as the nurse on the case. I get a notification. So the next, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna do this real time with you guys. I'm gonna go into the electronic system and I'm gonna pull up the patient and the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the hospice referral and all the intake paperwork so I can get a history on the patient. It's really important that you know what you're walking into before you go in. So I don't know if everyone has the luxury of doing this because if you're on the clock and they call you, you might have to go straight to an admission. You may not have time to look over the paperwork. But even if you can sit in your car right outside the house before you go in just to get a good assessment 
of what the referral is and maybe the type of medications they're on, I know will really benefit you as a nurse because going in blind is something we never want to do unless it's an emergency, of course. So the way I like to do it is I like to go into the chart, going to read up on my patient, and then I'm gonna link another video right here. I did another video that explains how I chart with an iPad. So this here is my iPad. Let me swipe up so there's no patient information. Uh, this is my iPad Pro with my keyboard that I absolutely love. And I prefer this because I have an Apple Pencil that I can write on so when I'm at the house, I can take quick notes instead of trying to type something. Then I don't have to place this anywhere. To try to find a barrier to place this on, patients' homes can be quite um, interesting and they're not set up ideal as you would think. So it's very important that you have something that you can carry. Some people don't like technology, they like a notepad, they like to take their own paper. So however that works for you, that's fine. But right now I have this on a keyboard because I'm gonna be taking some notes, setting up my day. And then when I get into the home, I'm actually gonna take this off the case and then I'll have my pen and I can just take notes. And then in one of my other previous videos that I will link in the description, I went over hospice essentials so I have a whole playlist of just nursing videos. I'd recommend that you actually go in there and just look at all my hospice ones if that's what you're interested in or my public health nursing ones. I also have interview videos. So go ahead and just go in there and take a look after this video to kind of get up to speed of where we're at. But of course, if you have more questions, always let me know and I can make more videos for you. Okay, so at this point, I have the patient's referral up and the latest documentation that was provided by my company. So I'm going to read that in real time and I'll be right back. So I am back. This one was not too lengthy, thank goodness. Some of them can be many, many pages. So I went through and read everything. I have noted demographics, diagnoses, allergies of course that should always be on your face sheet and it should be red highlighted somewhere in your electronic medical record system medications and then any type of wounds any type of drainage tubes Foley catheters G tubes etc so that I make sure that I have the correct supplies in my trunk before I get there I know what to assess in depth but we know that when we get there and we do our own head to toe, you may find other things and then you just further your assessment then. But at least it gives you a greater heads up and you can be some kind of prepared before you go in. Those are about the main things that I'm gonna pull out and put onto my notes so that when I get to the house, I have all the important items right up front. I can go over the consents, what is hospice about, the philosophy, going over all the policies and procedures that our facility uses, and then of course doing my head to toe assessment, making sure they have all the resources they need. I can do my medication reconciliation, and then just letting them know that the nurse and all the other supportive staff that hospice has will be in contact and will be following up. So like I mentioned earlier, the video that's currently still tagged up here is going to be how I set up my chart so that when I get to the house, it's really simple. Same thing for a follow-up is for a new admission, the way that I set up my chart. So there's nothing different. We just know that with admissions, there's a little bit more paperwork. So my charting's gonna take a little bit longer, which is why admissions take a little bit longer. So I have screenshotted all my important information. I have added it onto my chart and that's it and I'm ready to go. So what I will do next is I am going to call the number that is primary on this client's account make sure that they know what time I'm coming and that I can double confirm it because every agency is different, but for ours, the intake coordinator sets it up, but I always like to just touch bases just to make sure that I am double sure that when I show up, they're gonna be there and I'm not gonna make a trip for nothing. So I am going to call the family or the client and go ahead and confirm my time that I'm coming. I like to confirm the address and find out, you know, is there a gate code, is it an apartment, things like that. I then will look it up on Google Maps just so I know how much traffic I could possibly hit and know the area. And then I will load my iPad. I already have all my supplies in my trunk and then I will head over there. I like to give myself an extra 10 to 15 minutes depending on what part of town I'm going to, just so that I have enough time in case I get lost. While this video was short and sweet, I just wanted to show you how I prepare the process I take so that when I get to the admission, it is all about the family and the patient. 
And with my company, I get to go home and chart. I don't have to chart at the location. So then I will come home and with all my notes that I have, my consent forms, I will get everything together so that I can submit it to my agency. And then I will work on all the charting. Like I said before, all of our charting is electronic. So it's just a matter of going in and documenting everything, putting in the medications, any DME orders they need, supplies, etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will answer them. I will reply with a video, whatever you guys would like to see. I get so many comments and I reply to every single one. If I missed yours, I'm sorry, but I really try to get to every single one and I get a ton of DMs on Instagram. I'm gonna put my Instagram here. So please feel free to DM me if you have any questions. I love helping you guys out with whatever questions you have, if I can, or try to point you in the right direction. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something new, if you liked it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.